Good morning. Welcome to Going to Ground on May the 3rd, the fourth Sunday of Easter. And whether it's your first or 44th time viewing one of these short films, thank you for, for watching. And, and, and I trust that the day is breaking with some promise for you, wherever you are today. Uh, at the weekend, on Going to Ground on Saturday, I've tended to sing a song or read a poem. And on Sunday, read from my weekly blog piece, short essay of reflection uh, on uh, on some aspect of, of, of the place that uh, has been most in mind. And this week, that's been Salisbury Cathedral. And as some of you will know, this week sees the 800th anniversary of the foundation of the cathedral, or the new cathedral, when the city moved from Old Sarum, was transplanted, the whole thing, including the, uh, the, the cathedral and the people, just a short distance to uh, a fertile area of land where the rivers meet and uh, there uh, the, the building we know today began. And I've been imagining what's going on in those vast empty chambers of the cathedral during lockdown, probably much the same as, as has taken place in the previous eight centuries full of mystery, full of light, full of God, full of earth. And uh, I've been transported there in my thinking and wishing I was there, to be honest. And so I wrote this week about the cathedral and uh, a piece called In Terror Pax, In Earth Peace. May breaks with a complex sky and high procession of clouds. Earth is mobile, mercurial, mirroring the heavens like the cold sun of each spent dandelion. Simon Weil, a writer whose lightning insights smolder still, considered this counterpoint to be more than merely material. Every human being, she wrote, every human being has at their roots here below a certain terrestrial poetry, a reflection of the heavenly glory the link of which they are more or less vaguely conscious with their universal country. That's a quote I've returned to again and again over the years. Uh, this idea of terrestrial poetry, beautiful image. That our shifting temporal existence might be partnered in the dance with eternity is an idea old as wisdom and has choreographed the Christian understanding of space and time. Our terrestrial poetry finds pinpoint places that map this instinct, requiring you are here arrows to indicate the way. Even the most outlandish scriptural depictions of the next world are necessarily rooted in this one. St John's apocalyptic monsters still have wings and eyes, even if uncannily numerous. The biblical heaven, in other words, is an extrapolation of the biblical earth. A church spire is thus an upended map pin, a stake in Empyrean fields, as if our mortal tent will swiftly blow away. In a week when many were together for the 800th anniversary of Salisbury Cathedral's foundation, this is much in mind. I am carried back to a service there on this date last year for the installation of new honorary canons, an event as ethereal as any I can recall. The atmosphere inside was seraphic. As we wafted on soft voluntaries to the prebendary stalls of Alton Borealis and Netherbury in terror. My initial response was entirely to these radiant names they're written on the, the seats of the, of the choir stalls where the canons are literally installed. Imaginative, alternative versions of ordinary diocesan villages. Where on earth are these places? Viewed one way, this was obscure ceremonial with fairly worldly roots. Prebens had been valuable endowments of land or other revenue attached to the office of cathedral canon and thereby prone to becoming 
the ecclesiastical equivalent of rotten boroughs. Yet the effect of invoking them was tremendous. And by the conclusion of worship, I felt as if I'd visited another dimension in which familiar parishes each had their own celestial counterpart. Wherever Alton Borealis is, I thought, I want to dwell there. From Martin's cell, Iron Age Hill Fort, and one of the loftiest as well as most peaceful spots in Wiltshire, you can, on a clear day, see across Salisbury Plain to where the foremost spire in England lances the skies, glorifying God in the highest. It remains a kind of eternal trig pillar for pilgrims, including Thomas Fuller, an army chaplain from the English Civil War, a good Church of England man with his heart in heaven and both feet on the ground, according to Canon Charles Smith in his book Church and Nation. In his memoir of those stricken years, Mixed Contemplations, Fuller reflects, Travelling on the plain, which, notwithstanding, hath its risings and fallings, I discovered Salisbury steeple many miles off. Coming to a declivity, I lost sight thereof, but climbing up on the next hill, the steeple grew out of the ground again. Yea, I often found it and lost it, till at last I came safely to it and took my lodging near it. It fareth thus with us while we are wayfaring to heaven. Mounted on the Pisgah top of some good meditation, we get a glimpse of our celestial Canaan. But when, on the flat of an ordinary temper, or in the fall of an extraordinary temptation, we lose the view thereof. Thus, in the sight of our souls, heaven is discovered covered and recovered till though late at last though slowly surely we arrive at the haven of our happiness god bless you as you go to ground <laughs>